Vikings were the true definition of exploration and encounter. Unlike others who had explored new lands, the Vikings had become innovative about it. They used boats to go on long voyages, finding places where people had already settled and places no one had found before them. The lands where no one was, they took it. And the land where people already were, they took it. The Vikings also encountered everything there was to encounter. They met people that wanted to kill them, join them, or trade with them. They also had to deal with the oceans that they traveled, that bring storms and constantly destroyed their ships, and other people that were raiding, which constantly destroyed their ships. People say that the raid of Lindensfarne started the history of the Vikings, since this was one of the first and largest raids. Whether it was planned or not, the Vikings had attacked Lindensfarne when they were weak from recent natural disasters. This allowed them to easily break the defenses and slaughter almost everyone in the town and then take any materials they wanted. This raid had gained a name for the Vikings and let other isles get prepared because the Vikings would continue these raids. After Lindensfarne, the Vikings just kept going down the line of islands and just kept raiding them one after one. The Vikings in the British Isles was one of the key events that helped lead to the exploration of anything out west of Europe. Once they had started to pillage coastal islands of Europe and Britain, more and more Viking ships would start to head out west towards what no one knew at the time was North America. The Vikings landed what today is called Canada and stayed for as long as they could until they had no provisions left. This marked the first official exploration of the Western Hemispheres and the Americas. Now, here is a small video that sums up what I said and you may think of Vikings as barbarians, pirates, and pillagers, but we bet you didn't know there's much more to their story. The Vikings first made a name for themselves in AD 793, when a group of them attacked a monastery off the coast of what is now northeastern England. Over the next two centuries, they spread through Europe, the North Atlantic, and beyond, during what is known as the Viking Age. They skillfully navigated the seas and waterways of Europe in their famous wooden longships, staging hit-and-run raids of coastal cities and towns. The Vikings weren't all part of a single race, and they didn't have a single ruler or central government. Instead, there were many different groups, each led by a different chieftain. Hailing from Scandinavia, they left their barren homelands to seek fortune in other lands. It was their willingness to destroy institutions and objects with religious value that earned the Vikings the enduring hatred of Christian Europe, who considered them uncivilized, violent barbarians. But in reality, they were much more than that. The Vikings were some of the most skilled seamen of the time, and their longships were lighter, faster, and more maneuverable than any other crafts of the day. Viking merchants peacefully traded Scandinavian furs, timber, and other goods with countries as far away as the Mediterranean and the Middle East. Some people in the countries they traded with or even invaded came to respect the Vikings and even enlisted them as allies. Swedish Vikings, known for their strength, formed the elite Varangian Guard, which protected the Byzantine emperors in 11th century Constantinople. And Slavic peoples in Eastern Europe hired Vikings to collect taxes and help them fight off Turkish warriors. In Ireland, the Viking settlement in Dublin became one of the leading ports in all of Europe. And by the end of the 9th century, Vikings had conquered nearly all of England. Their influence can be seen clearly in place names and personal names in the region, and on the English language itself. The Viking Age had a tremendous impact outside of Europe as well. In the late 10th century, Norse Viking Eric the Red founded a colony on Greenland that flourished for over 400 years. His son, Leif the Lucky, would go even further, landing in what is now Canada nearly 500 years before Christopher Columbus made his first transatlantic trip. The Viking Age may have lasted less than 300 years, but in that time, these complicated people made an important mark on Western society and the world. In a whole lot of ways, we bet you didn't know.